Hi, my name is Megan. I'm Emily. We are coming to you from Wharton Grove Public Library to talk to you about some of the top books of 2017. So okay. my top book from 2017 was The Heart's Invisible Fury by John Boyne. Yes! Uh, which, <laughs> yeah, we both loved that book. <laughs> and um, I think we both I read and listened to it on audiobook. I think you listened to it on mm -hmm. audiobook. So they're both awesome. If you like audiobooks, that's really good too. Um, and it's just the story of a young man growing up in in Dublin um, is where he starts, and then he travels around, and you get little snippets of his life. I believe it's like every seven years. Um, it's a beautiful book, beautiful representation of one man's life. So my uh, one of the top books of 2017 is The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. Um, this is a book by a Canadian author that came out in two, at the beginning of 2017, and it opens up. In, two, in 1914 um, in Montreal and it tells a story of two orphans, Rose and Pierrot. And when I describe it to people, I describe it in an adult version of Anne of Green Gables as if Anne of Green Gables was raised on gritty streets of Montreal. It's lovely, it's magical, there's love, there are relationships, um, there are mean nuns, there are uh, I uh, mean gangsters. Uh, I would rec I would compare it to The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern uh, 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 as well. It's just a lovely book and I just loved it to pieces. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and then my next book was An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. Um, and I describe this book to people as the Antebell himself if they were on a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, yeah. So you have um, segre well segregation basically, but you also have a slave slave labor force, and that's um, done by race, by by the color of one's skin, um, and so they're separated very distinctly, and uh, and. It's just sort of, they're on a journey, Earth has collapsed, and the one character, our main character, is trying to figure out what's going on and why they haven't reached their destination, and um, you know, all while existing in this very uncomfortable and difficult and problematic world. Um, but it's just gorgeous. I loved it as well. Uh, my next book is American War by uh, Omar El Akkad. And this book is a dystopia, so if you just finished watching or reading um, Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale, this would be a good uh, read-alike. The concept of the book um, is it's 2074 and the United States is going through a war, second civil war. This time the war is over the use of fossil fuels, southern states are still using fossil fuel, fuels, northern states are pr prohibiting using um, uh, coal, and uh, at the same time the climate change is affecting the country, a lot of coastal cities and coastal areas are underwater, and we have Sarah who is the main character of the book, and she lives in a refugee camp, and she slowly becomes a tool of a war. It's a beautiful book, it's about climate change, it's about war, it's about refugees. You want Sarah to survive, you want Sarah to to have a happy ending, although you have bad feelings about what's going to happen in the end. And the end of the book has a twist, although you will know at the beginning what can happen, but if you miss it, you will be surprised. And I was surprised and devastated. Lovely, lovely book. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my final pick is You Don't Have to Say You Love Me um, by Sherman Alexie. And I listened to this and read it, and it's beautiful. He reads it. So there's something special, I think, when an author reads their own words. Like they know the tones that are meant to go along with those words and the way that they're meant to be said and presented to the world. And so it was great to, to do both. But I just loved it so much that I couldn't listen to it as slowly as an audiobook reads, so I had to read it too. And um, it's beautiful. It's in, it's many essays um, with poems. Um, and it's just, it's so many things, but it's it starts off as a grief novel. He loses his mother and he has to go and, and bury his mother and meet his family and take care of that. And it's where it kind of opens and starts, but it just evolves from there. And it's so current, like he, um, I, I feel like, I think he mentions in the book that he was writing it like up until it went to the press. Like it's very um, current in that way. He talks about Trump, he talks about the election. Um, and so that's, you know, again, very interesting in a book that just came out. 
And then he also, you know, talks about the fact that his mother was the last person alive who speaks his tribe's language and how she just died. And so his language has just died and what that means um, for him, you know, as a writer and, and as a person, a member of this group. And uh, yeah, again, just a, it's a beautiful book. Definitely worth reading. He's a great writer. Oh, so good. Uh, so my last book is We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby. I try to finish with something funny. And this is definitely funny. The book, especially the cover, reminds me a little bit of Jenny Lawson's Furiously Happy, except <laughs> the cover with that strange raccoon, the super happy raccoon. Here we have a cat. Uh, the cat was not hurt in the process of making that photo, the author said. Samantha Irby, so this is a memoir, this is a collection of essays based on her life. She's a blogger, she is super smart, she's super funny. She was raised, born and raised in Evanston, lived most of her life in Rogers Park. She describes her difficult childhood of growing up. She, when she was born, her mom um, was a single mother. Um, she had muscular dystrophy when she, when she was born, or her mother had muscular dystrophy. So she ended up uh, taking care of her mother as a child. Uh, she was born in a, in a um, in, and her dad was an alcoholic. Uh, she lived in Evanston in a, in, a, in, a, in a school that had a lot of people who came from privilege, so she describes that. She describes working in a, at a vet clinic for many years and interacting with that. Falling in love, falling out of love, being uh, an African-American woman, being a large woman, uh, being a bisexual woman, uh, having Crohn's disease and the silliness and, and the trauma coming from that. Uh, the book has a happy ending. Now she's married, she lives in Michigan. She also writes about the ridiculousness of living in Michigan. Uh, and the book, this not this book, her previous book is being converted into or made into a HBO show, I believe, yeah. one of the shows right now. She's a David Sedaris, but even more hilarious, more irreverent. Uh, she reads the book, and I would recommend an audiobook, like you said. Some books are just a little better if they're read by the authors. Love this book to pieces. If you need a book to laugh and giggle all the way through, this is a book for you.